Welcome to our second episode in our Menu 2C videos. And in this episode, we're going to talk about polypeptides. We're going to talk about our levels of protein structure. And then we're going to talk about the functions of proteins. So let's get this party started. All right, in our last episode, we talked about how you can take one amino acid and join it with another amino acid to make a dipeptide. And that used dehydration synthesis. Remember, we took out the water and that allowed us to build things together. And then if we ever wanted to break that dipeptide, we would put the water back through a process of hydrolysis. So look over here on this picture on the right. Okay, as you can see here, this is a dipeptide. You have two amino acids joined together, and they're joined together by the peptide bond. And that peptide bond represents the stored energy that was created during dehydration synthesis. So if you wanna make a polypeptide, you just take your dipeptide here and you just add another amino acid to it. So you can add an amino acid to the carboxyl end or you could add a, an amino acid to the amino end on the other side. Now, proteins in general are very, very long. In fact, the average amino acid in your body is a chain of 300 amino acids. So proteins, very long, very complicated, and they have a 3D structure. And you're gonna learn that the number one thing that determines the function of a protein is going to be its shape and its structure. So uh, we're gonna learn about that on the next slide. Proteins have a three-dimensional structure, and remember, their shape determines their function. And a great way to remember that their shape is involved I want you to think of a famous 20th century American architect named Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, think of his architectural style as um, some of the prairie houses you'll find in the Chicago area. Think of uh, a famous house called Falling Water. And think of the Guggenheim Art Museum in New York. Those are some of the famous um, uh, buildings that he's done. And Frank had a saying that form follows function. In other words, the shape of his home would be determined by what that home or that building was supposed to do. So that applies to proteins because its shape will determine its function. So let's focus on the shape. There's four levels of protein structure and they're creatively called primary, secondary, tertiary, because there's no word called third area, and then there's quaternary. And the most important level of these uh, structures is primary because the primary uh, structure determines the next three. So what is the primary structure? It's simply the amino acid sequence. So there are 20 different amino acids. And so depending on the sequence that you put those 20 in, those uh, amino acids are going to interact with each other, specifically the side chains or the R groups. And that's going to cause this protein to either twist, fold, or, and twist and fold both of them together. All right. The secondary uh, structure is the either the coils or the folds, and we're gonna go over those in a little bit more detail in just a second. The tertiary structure is when you take the secondary structure and you're gonna fold it back and forth on each other to give it a three-dimensional shape. And then the quaternary structure is when you add a completely different amino acid uh, sequence to it or a whole different polypeptide to make what is called a globular protein, which truly means a glob of protein. All right, so I'm going to focus in on this picture here to the left. And on the very first level here, we see your primary. That is simply your level of or your sequence of amino acids. So think of like we have here. It's just like the, the beads on a string or like the pearls on a necklace. And so however these 20 amino acids interact with each other, it's either going to lead to the next ones. In the secondary structure, your primary structure is either going to fold and when it folds back and forth, just think of an accordion or a paper fan that you would have made in elementary school. And this is actually called a beta pleated sheet. And the symbol for beta is a capital letter B with a long tail sticking out of it. Or it may coil up. So think of a phone cord, how it coils up. That's called a helix. And this is called an alpha helix. And the symbol for alpha is simply like a fish. So you either have an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet that is the secondary structure. Now often these uh, alpha helixes or these pleated sheets, they're gonna fold back on each other. And that's what happens here in your tertiary structure. And remember tertiary means third area because there's no word for that. And if you don't wanna write out these words, you can just use these symbols. So one with a degree symbol or the superscript 
small letter O. That's primary. Secondary is the little O. And then third area or tertiary is this one. And so you'll notice that this one has coils and it has sheets. And it's just folded back and forth on each other. And then if I was to add in a completely different polypeptide, that would give you your quaternary structure. And so over here, you've got one form of uh, protein. And then over here, this darker gray is another one. And this is how hemoglobin is. In fact, hemoglobin has four different polypeptides that will join together on that one. All right, so this is real important stuff. That's why it's in red. So make sure you know it. Primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary the levels of protein structure. And then finally in this episode, we're going to go over the seven functions of a protein. And I've got a great way to remember this. I just want you to remember the first letter in all of these listed here on the screen, and it's escape time. Escape time is the way that you're going to remember this one. So the E in escape stands for energy source. Your body is going to use proteins as its third choice when it comes to energy. First thing it's going to use is whatever kind of carbohydrates you have available in your body. Once you run out of carbohydrates, then it's going to start to burn the lipids, which would be your body fat. And once you run out of those two, and then it's going to start to break down your proteins. Now, when you start to get to the protein level, uh, that means you're dealing with starvation. And, you know, that's when you get that just skin and bones look because your muscles have been broken down by your body. And you literally are skin and bones. The S is going to stand for structure. Uh, the shape of a cell is going to be determined by some proteins, specifically two small things that make basically a scaffolding that's inside your cell. And that scaffolding is creatively called the cytoskeleton because it does act like a skeleton. And these are microtubules, which stands for tiny tubes, and microfilaments, which are tiny threads that will tie the tubes together to make the scaffolding. The C in escape is going to be chemical messengers, also known as hormones. Hormones are chemicals that are made in one part of your body, and they're going to cause something to happen in a different part. And many of your hormones are going to be proteins, insulin being an example. Uh, remember, see, it ends with an I-N. The time part begins with a T, so T stands for transport. Hemoglobin is a type of protein that's used to transport because it's going to carry oxygen within your red blood cells. The I in time stands for immunity. Your immunity is basically a big chunk of your immune system is controlled by antibodies. Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins that are specific for particular pathogens. Uh, if you take a Project Lead Away class called uh, HBS, you're going to learn a, bit of, a little bit about that. And if you take our anatomy and physiology class here, you're going to learn more about how the immune system works. The M stands for movement. Uh, the M stands for movement, and specifically actin and myosin, which are in your muscle cells, are going to use to contract. And then finally, the most important part of uh, protein's function is enzymes, and these are the ones that control all of the chemical reactions. And um, we have an entire menu that goes towards uh, enzymes. So we'll get that one on our next menu, which is 2D. Okay. This is a really important topic. You need to know these seven functions. So make sure you study this and remember escape time. So until the next episode, we're going to catch you on the flip side.